We're here to talk through the Spiral Galaxies puzzle by Maranchan Tanta with a hidden theme. Like there's a little bit of symmetry here in the center, but really when we write down hidden theme, and we, we sometimes question should we just leave it themeless or not. Uh, hidden in a Spiral Galaxies could mean something about how the puzzle solves. Very often it's about the shape of a galaxy. And so this is where, and we'll see this as we go to the speed solving side of this puzzle, you can often end up with a wide diversity of times, including if people grok onto the hidden theme, um, taking advantage of that and having that speed up their solve. And so Dan Katz here actually really, really crushed this puzzle uh, with using uh, some of that intuition uh, in his own comments. He, he definitely found the theme fast and used it. He's a brilliant mystery hunt and other puzzle hunt style solver. And so this is kind of logic puzzle where uh, reading the author's mind can make you super fast. And uh, it's it's a reason. It was actually a debate at the most recent World Puzzle Championships, World Stokely Championships, if the author's names should be on the puzzle grids. But this is one of the first tournaments that had that. So let's watch me go through this puzzle again with a 4 minute, 39 second top score, and then two at the 7 minute, 3 that were, were tied on that uh, line. My guess is uh, Dan's time is going to be quite, quite, quite competitive, and I'm unlikely to reach it. Um, but I'm pretty good at this style, including how I approach it on paper which isn't to be a reckless guesser, but is to have a way of, through my notation of both marking um, uh, points of progress, but then getting some ways to chip into the grid. So I'm, I'm often maybe not first in these puzzles, but I'm rarely like median or last in these puzzles because I tend to uh, catch on to the most key bits. And so uh, one of the things you'll see, and we'll talk through this in the more logical part of the, the solving video, is how do you map the cells that are most limiting in a spiral galaxies? And so um, my eye is drawn more quickly to some of these spaces. We'll actually go through and see if there are others I don't hit in this video that are useful. But then after I map those spaces, I try to do at least this step. Can I draw that galaxy on paper, not as an actual galaxy, but lightly in lines, and then get some knowledge from it? So for instance, it's not just that one cell that's marked with an A, both of those cells with an A have to work together. Um, I could actually this time, although I don't do it here, I can erase one of the three galaxy options that A goes to. The, the A that's uh, in the lower right of that uh, triad uh, would be putting the uh, new A letter into another galaxy center. We'll show that in a second. Um, I'm now looking at B, and B is that lower left corner. It's another cell that really stands out after you mark the initial edges in this grid. Um, here's a case where trying to draw it in, I've got to come vertically through that channel and it quickly cancels. I can draw the left one in, so I'm looking back on the right one, like is there any other way to reach it? Yes, that B comes through, but I have to come vertically through it and that vertical thing is going to reach a conflict. We'll show this again when I get to the pen pass side of this video, but I have now found the first uh, for sure pairing of letters and cells pretty far away. I now do need to figure out what are the only valid ways this goes. I sometimes now draw these lines along the edges because it could be left or right, but in drawing those lines I've then run into the logic where it has to be uh, as I've now put in. I think there's actually one more cell even further up that I can mark in at this time, but I'm now getting some sense of which cells aren't reachable, and so therefore must be part of this big galaxy. That's putting some more limits in the grid. It's also putting some more edges around the two sides. Uh, I should be able to get some more vertically, like that whole set up has to come together. And I've got that edge marked off, which puts in some more around the center, puts in these points of progress. I have that sure edge, but not yet the other one. So I at least have the start of that galaxy shape. I'm now looking like, is that a curious shape? Can get come back to the center pieces, or does that have to go to the galaxy immediately to the right? I think we'll end up seeing it has to go to the galaxy immediately to the right, but later in the solve. Like, it's not yet resolvable enough. But now I'm remembering when I was starting on the A's, it's always good to go back to your earliest letters, which you put time into, which is one reason I even use the letters. I, I, I very much map my, on paper, um, my cells of interest in order. You can't come through the center anymore because everything will collide with these. And so this A on the right side has to come together. And so here I'm getting some feel like I've got a big vertical galaxy on the left. Maybe this theme is about a big vertical galaxy on the right that's got a similar shape to it. Like maybe that's how it goes. Um, that might be the hidden theme. I guess I, I'm not exactly kind of internalizing that yet, but uh, I'm still just really following a logical path here. Three and a half minutes getting a fair amount of progress, but still ways to go. We'll see sort of how this consolidates. That edge I'm now just drawing in is a key place of consolidation because this is now a new type of cell that's very, very hard to reach. 
And in marking that in, we now actually finish off a lot of the shape, which is going to give us the whole right side of the grid. Marks in this space, marks in this, now finishes the whole A shape. Coming now back to what I had at the top, like how do I reach into those? Well, that's now like my new letter of interest. It can't be part of any of the center galaxies, so it has to now be part of what's at the top. And here, like everything from this point forward is fully logical, so I won't revisit this in the Penpa side uh, as much. But you see sort of you keep getting a new shape of interest. Where can D go? D's got to go through the center cell. I don't know how it goes through the center cell. And this ends up being something that uh, Dan Katz is about to finish in three more seconds. Uh, this is saying if you actually grok the shape of the center region, uh, which is what actually the hidden theme is, uh, you'll have the fastest solve in the space. Uh, the thing is like how does D connect? It could come <laughs> vertically, it could go around those circles, it could actually do both. And so the fun shape is there is a dollar sign shape you can make if it does both. And the way this works logically is those other galaxies uh, can't be both vertical or both horizontal. They would cut off both of the paths for D, so D has to take both paths because you can't reach to those cells in any other way. I'm getting that slowly by seeing some of these cells that on the other half of the grid can't be reached. That's giving me like all these now as Ds, and so I'm finally seeing I've got to make a square, make another square. And so uh, intuiting the hidden theme could have saved me some time, but this is still looking like a very fast solve. We're about one edge away, just confirming the last bits. We'd turn this in at 5.30, uh, or since I'm giving myself some credit for the, the clicking the clock and stopping the clock, 5.25 as a theme, so get the silver finish. But hopefully through a pretty illustrative solve on paper of how to approach this style, including finding those cells of interest. So let's come back. I guess I'm shading in the theme and writing my notes. What else is curious about this puzzle? There's a five on the upper right. And I guess one thing that went through my thinking as I was solving is, do I even have like another five? And it's, it's across three galaxies middle left, but there's sort of a 55. So I don't even know if the theme was strictly using that five with the five, but the paired A, B galaxies that are really big on the left and right these other things, they probably all work together, but my guess is the main element of the theme is that, that shaded bit in the middle. So let's give you a little bit of some intuitive strategy. We won't go all the way through this puzzle, but if this is the starting stage and then this is the stage after you mark in some cells, what are cells that are hard to reach in this grid? And you can be very deliberate about this. You shouldn't be, but you can be. Like, let's take a cell like this. What galaxies can touch to it? This can. This can't because it reaches over to here. Uh, this actually can, this actually can. So we're getting to a count of three, uh, not yet necessarily the place to go. And I did say like sometimes when you get to a count of three, try to draw in this to see if you can actually make a valid galaxy. Notice I can make a valid galaxy here, but you know my eye isn't drawn to this cell. It's certainly not drawn to this one that has lots of options uh, around it. You want to draw, get, get your eyes drawn to cells that are hard to reach. So I focused on the bottom. Let's see if there's some others around the top we can find. Uh, for sure, there are some cells like this that are like where we already know that these borders don't work well. But again, here I can quickly find three galaxies that work to this. The one that's a little curious is when you start scanning here, this cell, I think I could have marked in sooner. And that's because it can't be part of this because of where it conjoins. So this option would have this reaching across. It would have, I think, this reaching to here. And you'd have to do something like this to make this go or come you know this way uh, and then also it uh, looks like even uh, this galaxy works and so again like these aren't very good but at least you're seeing the spaces I'm scanning to find them still scanning through the grid I actually came down here sooner why come down here sooner both there are more galaxies here I got more edges here and I've got a lot more collisions here so I, my eye was first drawn to this side I immediately know it's not working with anything in this bottom row because that takes things off the grid. And I also know it can't reach into this space. So I first really need to remove this galaxy. And uh, this is probably the hardest one to grok onto, but uh, if you had to make this shape, you will end up limiting this cell. Basically this galaxy has to have a symmetric look to this galaxy. You can't take this extra cell with this one. And so this gets canceled. And so this is where I was seeing this is a curious cell. It never works with this because of the paired space. And so this blue cell has to come through here and can map to this, this, or this. Once I actually know this blue cell, I can remove this because that would have these paired. And so these are the start. 
I then actually find this is another cell of interest and why not like this cell? Well, this cell has options like over here, like the reason this corner going to extremes is always a good choice. This is far away from any other circle. Three cells actually away from any circle. This is quickly canceled. This actually hits another space. This goes through this space and it's never gonna work. And so this is actually quickly reduced to these two circles. And you do actually have to consider this circle, but it's, it's marked across the grid. And so these are the two to look at. And this is where, as I was trying to say during the solving video, knowing that this green has just two options, the next step is to at least see that you can actually connect to those with a full galaxy. And so knowing that the cell and the cell are gonna be our terminal positions, how can we make these work? I see a lot of options for this green. I've got sort of extra things I can take around it. So this looks very promising. When we try to draw around this one, we can't pass over the space. So we can't like come a tricky way here. We have to come vertically. And to get vertically these sets connected, you'll see that this cell always maps to this one. So we can't take this cell and now we have a hard edge here and there's no way I'm gonna be able to reach over to this cell. And so that elimination is the first thing I saw on the solve that got me to here. And at this stage, even mapping that in, we know that we've got to have the green channel uh, coming through, dodging this edge. These are known for sure. That now quickly eliminates this option from blue and everything else you can probably track. If you just start with the seed of the puzzle, uh, everything else is, is a good uh, intuition from here, but a start from recognizing two pretty critical cells and following through in the solution. So, you know, there's not more I can and can teach except through these examples of how you'll want to spot those in future puzzles, but that's a lot of the main heuristic for spiral galaxies. Uh, there are ways to use give and take of regions and other things as you get going and try to even like fix a broken solution and run into the right solution. And that, that could actually be faster. I don't know if some of the others in the world use that approach, but I at least try to use what I'm doing on paper, big letters, solid writing, sketch in lightly what the galaxies do and see how they collide. And that, that works pretty well for me. So thanks. We'll see you again soon.